welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to investigate the contents of this box, which contains an Orange Pi PC. Now, Orange Pi is a range of single board computers made by the Shenzhen Zulong software company in China, with the Orange Pi PC being somewhere in the middle of their product line. So let's go and take a closer look. So, here we have the Orange Pi PC in its little box. It's uh, managed to get all the way from China in this box. I find it amazing how the different postal services all coordinate to make that happen. Anyway, let's uh, get in. I've got a uh, stand with a knife here, and I think we can just uh, get in from the top. I think this is the best way in. Yes, we can do that. And down there. Lots of cutting. Come on, let us in. And, oh yes. Aha, we can see Orange Pi. There is the uh, right way up for you. The Orange Pi in the box. We'll have a look at that in a second. And there's also here a, uh, a power lead, which I got for reasons I'll explain, in, and I'm sure in a second as well. And uh, a box in a box here. So let's get into uh, the box itself. There we are. And uh, aha, here is the uh, Orange Pi. And, uh, oh no, that actually is sealed. Do not worry. Mr. Scissors are on hand and we can open this up. And there we are. We have here the uh, Orange Pi single board computer. Now, I'll run through the specs of this thing in a second, but before that, just a word on purchasing and price. I got my Orange Pi PC by visiting orangepie.org, where I clicked on point me to the boards which takes you through to AliExpress. And there you will find there are various sets for Orange Pi PCs, if I can stay on the screen properly. There we are. And you'll see that set one is the Orange Pi PC plus a power lead. And as you can see on the screen here, I paid $16.50 for the Orange Pi PC plus a power lead, and then $3.99 for shipping from China to the UK. So my total spend was $20.49, which converted through to £16.49 for me, which I think was very good value for the hardware obtained. So, let's now take a look at the hardware of the Orange Pi PC, its specs. And to start off with, as we can see in the middle of the board here at this rather jaunty 45 degree angle, we have the system on a chip, which is an all winner H3. And this includes a quad-core ARM Cortex-A7 CPU running at 1.6 GHz and ARM Mali 400 GPU running at 600 MHz. Next to the system on the chip, you'll see we've got two other chips here on the top of the board. These are both 512 MB of RAM. So in total, we have one GB of DDR3 RAM here on our Orange Pi PC. That's pretty much it for key chips on the top of the board. There isn't onboard Wi-Fi or Bluetooth on this board, although there is on other Orange Pies. And if we look under the board, there's really very little in the way of key chips there, well, none at all. But we do have here the uh, micro SD card socket, which is known as TF card on this, but it is effectively micro SD card. And that's where we will put in a micro SD card to cover our operating system, as usual, on single board computers. If we flip back again, let's consider connectivity, which is mainly on this end of the board, where, as you can see, we have a lonely single USB 2 full-size socket down here, two more full-size USB 2 sockets over here, and also an Ethernet port, which is 100 megabit Ethernet. Moving round, we find a very familiar-looking and totally Raspberry Pi compatible 40 GPI opens, and next to the GPI opens, we've also got an infrared receiver. Moving to the other end of the board, we have the first thing that might surprise you, because here, I'm sure you can see, we have got a micro USB 2 socket. And you're probably thinking, that is there to power the board. But it isn't. This is a USB 2 micro OTG socket. So on this board, we have three USB 2 sockets, host sockets full size on one end, and this single micro OTG socket on the other end. Next to that, we've got a camera connector, and we've also got a power button. Moving to the final side of the board, we have a full-size HDMI connector for connecting a monitor, and also a 3.5mm TTRS jack, which provides both composite video and also stereo audio. Talking of audio, we've also got a microphone on this board, which is rather handy if we want to do speech-based computing. And we have these three pins over here, 
which are a TTL UART 3-pin serial connector for doing things like debugging the board. Finally here we have our power connector. Yes, this is not powered by a micro USB socket, it's powered by this power connector. And because we've got that power connector, that's the reason I bought this power lead. So uh, let's open it up. You don't have to buy a power lead, but you might not have a connector around, a lead around with exactly the right terminal on the end, the right plug on it. So here the plug you need has to be four millimeters outer diameter, 1.7 inside diameter, 1.7 millimeters inside. So that will plug into the board here, so that'll power the board. And the other end of this, the standard USB Type-A connector, I'm going to plug into this, which is my uh, trusty Amazon Basics USB power adapter. It gives you two amps of power, useful for powering all sorts of things, including single board computers. So that'll go in there, so we can now why do you always get USB the wrong way around? 50-50 chance you always get it wrong. Anyway, that'll power the board all caught up there. Um, what else will we need? Well, there isn't Wi-Fi on this board, so we're going to be using this Wi-Fi dongle, which I think I'll plug into the USB socket at the end there. That'll just fit on very nicely to give us Wi-Fi. And of course, we will also need a micro SD card. I'll use a SanDisk card, as I so often do, and that will plug in under here into the socket, which hopefully has got a Hopefully you can hear that. It's a nice push-in, push-out connector, just like you don't have on the Raspberry Pi 3. Anyway, I will take that out and now go in search for some operating systems for our Orange Pi PC. So, here I am on the orangepi.org website, where I'm going to go to Resources and Downloads to find some operating system images for the Orange Pi PC. Now, this page contains the operating system images for all the different Orange Pies, lots of them here. And somewhere down here, we have the Orange Pi PC, which is what, uh, where is it? There it is, look. And uh, you can see there's all sorts of operating systems available, Android, Lubuntu, etc. There's various problems going on with the formatting here, I think. But I'm going to start out with Raspbian because there's a fairly recent Raspbian image, of November 2016. So we'll click on download now and a couple of options. We'll use the Google Drive download option and uh, presume we can just press on download. Google will tell me as a virus kind that it can't, so we'll download it anyway. And we'll stick that in our uh, download directory. That is fine. That'll take a second to download. And then once it's downloaded, I can use WinZip to extract the file. I can use SD Formatter to format up a micro SD card and then Win32 Disk Imager to write the image to the SD card, which we can then insert into our waiting Orange Pi PC. So, here we are booting into Raspbian on an Orange Pi PC. We can see four penguins there. Clearly, we've got four processor cores running OK. And we arrive at a login screen where the uh, username is root and the password is Orange Pi, and that will take us to the uh, Orange Pi Raspbian desktop, if you see what I mean. It's familiar to some extent, certainly in terms of things, things like Python um, sitting at the top here. And indeed, if we look through the, uh, the menu, you'll see that uh, this is fairly familiar Raspberry Pi territory and sort of some of the things which are available, Scratch and Sonic Pi and Mathematica and things are all, all there. Um, and we've got, uh, look down here under programming this is again what you'd expect to see under other loads of things quite a, quite a few things have been installed that could be useful for doing programming type stuff on a, a orange pi pc under raspbian however if i go into uh, internet here into the wpa uh, interface you'll see it hasn't picked up any uh, wi-fi adapter there. i can't get into anything on, on that i've tried three different usb wi-fi dongles and none of them can be picked up and, and used by a Raspbian on the Orange Pi PC. So I am currently online because I've plugged in a, a wired ethernet connector. And if I run up a browser, there we are. We can go online, which is great, but uh, we can't do so using Wi-Fi. And that clearly is a fundamental constraint on this system. This is, however, clearly pretty close to a uh, Raspbian. If we go to accessories and I go to a uh, LX terminal, let's have a boot terminal, why not? Let's be wild. I can type things like um, raspi config, and you would expect to run that on a Raspberry Pi to run a configuration, and that will come up. Although, as you can see, 
It thinks here it's from a banana pie. We can see maybe the uh, roots of this have come from a Lee Maker. And if I do, for example, things like expand file system, go up and select that and enter, uh, it doesn't work, which is not terribly helpful. If we go down to advanced options, there are some things available, but there's nothing we can do that, for example, to sort out Wi-Fi. So uh, that clearly is a bit of an issue. If we look down there about, we can see clearly this is uh, something created for the uh, Banana Pie by Lee Maker. So there we are. Uh, I can't really recommend Raspbian on an uh, Orange Pie PC. I have tried doing a sudo apt-get update and a sudo apt-get dist upgrade to upgrade this version of Raspbian. It did work in terms of pulling things down and installing, but once it had, I couldn't boot at all. So I've really got nowhere else to go to try and get this to work. Now, I can't even close it down properly because if I go to a logout down there, I haven't got an option here to do a full shutdown. I can do a, a logout, which gets me back to the login screen, but there's no way to fully close the thing down. Um, you might say there's something up here, Chris, there is. It doesn't do anything. So all I can do is to turn the power off at this stage. So I'm not terribly impressed, to put it mildly, with the, the Raspbian implementation on the Orange Pi PC. So, I'm now trying to boot into Lubuntu on the uh, Orange Pi PC. It looks like something is happening. Maybe this one will work a little bit better. And we'll type in a Orange Pi again as our password. We've got a different colour desktop, haven't we? And we're now arriving in uh, Ubuntu. And again, Orange Pi logo. And uh, immediately it looks a little bit more slick. We've got the Chromium web browser up there. That might be, a, might be good, hasn't it? But uh, unfortunately, this is not the first time I've come into this. And again, you'll see issues with connectivity. It's here, I'm trying to connect into a wired connection. I haven't got a wired connection plugged in at the moment, so obviously that's not gonna work. But again, I've tried my three Wi-Fi dongles and they don't work. Uh, unfortunately, I can't get Wi-Fi to work under Ubuntu on the uh, Orange Pi PC. And again, I've tried to do an upgrade and an update of the system and that actually really hasn't worked at all. So I can't find any other way to get those drivers in to uh, access things. And I think this is probably an issue with USB drivers more generally. I didn't tell you that under um, Raspbian, I couldn't access a USB drive at all. Here, if I try to plug in a USB drive, I'll plug it in under there, and, um, and hopefully it'll find it. That looks fine, doesn't it? So we'll open up the drive in the drive manager, and there it is, except it isn't. Um, it can't actually get to it, so we can't access a USB drive. So I'm, I'm suspecting that there aren't sufficient drivers written to handle USB peripherals. My, my keyboard is working fine, my mouse is working fine, but I can't use Wi-Fi dongles and I can't use a, a standard USB drive. Fortunately, I can eject it, at least, at least that bit is working. But uh, clearly th there are some issues. I will just plug in a wired connection just to prove this thing does actually work because uh, I can do that, plug that in there. And now we actually should go online fairly quickly. Yes, there we are. And so I can run up, say, the Chromium web browser, and that should come up. It's uh, not as responsive as it should be, this, I have to admit, given that uh, it's got a fairly nifty quad-core processor. Did I get it? I did get it. That was quite a long launch for uh, Chromium. And I can go to, uh, please go somewhere. Uh, there we are, just try out my own site as usual. It'll get there eventually. Yes. Um, Again, I'm not terribly impressed with this. I mean, if you don't need the online access by Wi-Fi, then it, it does seem to work. I, I can't deny that. And I guess I have bought an Orange Pi knowing it hadn't got on board Wi-Fi, but I did expect I'd be able to plug in a Wi-Fi dongle, as has always worked for me previously on other single board computers. So uh, let's, I think, move on from uh, Lubuntu. At least I can actually shut this down properly. I've got a proper shutdown uh, option here, all the proper options available, so I'll do a proper shutdown of this. And then I think I'll try out Android, which is one of the operating systems that's certainly pushed to the fore by the uh, Orange Pi website. So, here I am, many hours later, a bit of messing around has gone on. We're now going into Android on the Orange Pi PC. And it's got a very nice uh, set of boot up screen, hasn't it? Telling us all about the all-winner H3. 
I have to say, whatever else I say about the Orange Pi PC, it is very easy to record. It is the easiest single board computer I've ever had to record HDMI signals from. But uh, here we are arriving in Android. And as you can see, it is in Chinese, which slightly confuses me, I, I have to admit. Um, but we know I can get down here, for example, into settings, because we can recognize Android stuff. And guess what? Again, I can't activate wireless LAN. I can flick a button, but it doesn't actually get me anywhere. Um, if I look across up here, I can see it's grayed out where I put in the, the details for my network. So sadly, I can't get into that. I've got the wired network working, that's fine, but uh, I can't get into the, the wireless network. Pressing escape on my keyboard just take me back a level in Android. And there's various apps here, which, which are fine. I can't actually get into the, the browser, sadly. It wants a Google account. So if I try and get to that, even on the wired network, um, I can't get past this. It's probably just me not knowing where to click. But um, if I try there, it brings up, a, wants me to enter details. Sadly, my keyboard, oh, my keyboard does work there. It didn't work there last time I booted. Obviously, things are getting slightly better. But um, I don't really want to put my Google details into this system to test it. So I'll leave that there. It's clearly, I'm not going to get very far. Escape, escape, presumably gets me back. How do I get out of this? Um, very careful. There we are. I've got out of this. Not as many as that. Let's do that. Um, so it works. There is Android, um, but unfortunately, it's not available for an English speaker like myself. So I think I've gone far enough in trying out software on the Orange Pi PC. There's no doubt there's a lot of stuff available, but uh, I can't get into wireless networking. And um, I have issues with language in this particular package. But if you're Chinese, you might find it very easy to use. So there we are, my first experience with an Orange Pi, and clearly, at least in terms of software, it could have gone somewhat better. Now, to some extent, I feel slightly guilty about the fact I didn't buy an Orange Pi with onboard Wi-Fi, or didn't buy one of their Wi-Fi dongles. But this said, I did try three Wi-Fi dongles with the Orange Pi PC, all of which I know work perfectly well with every other single board computer I've ever plugged them into. And I did try them with three different operating systems on the Orange Pi PC. So I think I gave it a fair shot. And also I did have problems with those operating systems in other respects, things like accessing USB drives and uh, being in a language I could actually read. So it might well be if I bought the latest Orange Pi model, none of these issues would exist. And clearly I don't want to damn the whole range from, from one video looking at one particular model. But uh, it remains the case that the Orange Pi PC continues to be promoted, continues to be sold, and yet the software available for it right now, at least in my view, isn't absolutely up to spec. Now, talking of single board computers which are held back by their software, in a couple of videos' time we're going to come back to this one, the ASUS Tinkerboard. This has had some operating system updates since I last talked about it about a six, seven weeks ago, whatever it is now. And um, I'm going to look at the video playback on this device, I'm going to look at temperatures and issues to do with cooling. But for now, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.